everyone. I'm Ioni Butler and I'm the founder of Uplifting Content. I haven't done a one-on-one -on -one Facebook Live with you guys for a while, so I thought it was about time. Today, I want to talk to you about a number of things. Um, how to deal with um, kind of onset of depression or anxiety and things like that. Um, how the world is in desperate need of more feminine energies in the world and some of the um, events that I'm going to be part of to do with that, as well as a question that I had from our fantastic Oleo, um, who's just an amazing member of the Uplifting Content community, um, who's always engaged and always sort of um, talking to people. Um, and he was wanting to find out about you know, how do you know where you go to move? He currently lives in Trinidad and he just doesn't feel like the culture and the attitude of the people is in alignment with sort of him. Um, he's got a huge heart, um, wants to give back, wants to help, and he's just not finding his tribe in that country. So we're going to be talking about different things like that. First of all, I wanted to say that I woke up this morning with uh, a feeling of just dread. Um, my heart was beating really fast and I was not feeling good at all. And as any of you know, if you've been on these calls before, I I talk a lot about dealing with depression. Um, and to me, that is the sign that something isn't right um, and that something there's, there's something not quite okay with how I'm feeling or what I'm thinking. And luckily, I've been in a really good place for the last few months. And so to have that kind of experience was a bit of uh, alarm bells went off. It wasn't a serious concern. But I, I had a really fantastic conversation with a woman called Runa Magnus yesterday. Um, sorry, Runa Magnus on Tuesday. So that was the last podcast episode. Episode. And I strongly, strongly recommend you to check it out. She's a fantastic woman who is all about helping people find their happiness zone, find the thing that really um, makes you tick so that, you know, life is just full of joy for you, which is what it should be. And this topic of the, of the podcast was how to get rid of limiting devices, a divisive or um, isolating beliefs. And I asked her how to do that. And the first thing she said was awareness. And I wanted to bring up that point because to me, that feeling this morning of waking up and having that dread, having that kind of feeling in my chest and feeling worried and nervous and anxious, to be aware of that is, is the first step because that to me is, an, uh, is a sign that something isn't in alignment and that I need to do some internal work. So I lay in bed with a bunch of different things that I knew I needed to do and get done and was kind of stressed about whether I should go through my phone and start working and start doing all these things on my list. And instead of doing all that busy, crazy stuff, I just sort of sat back and breathed. I was breathing until I felt that the, my heart rate had calmed down and that I was in fact breathing. When you're in these kind of states of stress, you, you take very sort of shallow, short breaths and I was holding on to my breath. And so it was giving myself a few minutes of just breathing. And that really, really helped. Um, it kind of loosened up that tightness in my chest and in my heart. I then picked up, um, and it was just sort of noting as well, like we kind of have to have an opinion about everything. I like this, I don't like this, I wanna do this, I don't wanna do that. And so I kind of let go of, of putting a judgment on the feelings that I was feeling um, and just observed them and just kind of started to listen to what is, the, what is the worry? What is the concern? What is the thing that's happened in the last sort of day that has led me to kind of have these feelings and just observe them without judgment? And then I picked up Ask and It Is Given, a book by Esther and Abram Hicks, which I talk about a lot. I haven't read in a long time. And so I knew that this was the type of book that I needed to sort of, again, and it's about um, connecting to source and knowing that we are greater than this vessel that we're in. And even just the first chapter that I read helped to kind of bring me back and ground me and center me again. So that was really important. Um, then I got up and went for a run and then I got ready and I came back and I did this. So I was going to not do this Facebook live. I was going to take that feeling as an excuse to turn inwards, um, and kind of shut down, but I decided against it. So I just wanted to share that with you because I know that a lot of you kind of join me on these things because you, because you get that that's things that you've experienced. And I, I think that it's important to share that. Um, that, you know, life can, it's like this. It can be like this. Your emotions are like this. And it's okay when you're on that rocky roller coaster. It's just finding the tools and finding the ways to manage what's going on with you so that, the, that you have more enjoyable highs than you do lows. But, you know, I don't think we ever kind of quite get rid of everything and, you know, we're just 
uh, euphoric for, for all eternity. I don't think that's quite possible. We're having a human experience, um, but it's how you manage it. So lovely to see some of you. There's some comments here. So I'm just going to start by saying hello. Uh, we've got Josh and Oleo. Hi, Tiffany. Hello, my love. Um, she says she can't type because she's working and that's totally okay. The lovely Andre Andrea Pennington, which um, we will be talking and doing an interview tomorrow. I don't think it's going to be live, but I'm so excited to connect with her again. Hello, Ali and Thomas. Um, oh, Andrea knows Runa Magnus too. Yeah, she's an absolute joy. Uh, so wonderful. Awareness is always the first move. I totally agree. Um, Elias is one of my cats, Sydney. One of my cats, Sydney Prescott, is sick and waiting for the vet. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, my love. I'm very fortunate he's coming to the house on a holiday, so may leave at any point. That's okay. You take care of your stuff, Olio. You can always watch this in the replay. Um, so another thing that I wanted to share with you, yesterday I went to a fantastic screening of a movie documentary called um, Amplify Her. And it was all about, um, it's by a filmmaker who, who talks about how we need more feminine energy in the world. There's all these masculine energies that are great at getting things done, but they can also be very destructive. And we've been having far too much masculine energy for far too long, which is why we've stripped the world of the resources, which is why there's all the suffering and all the awful things that are going on in the world. And what is necessary is more feminine en energies like of compassion, caring, understanding. We need more of this. And this is not a thing about, this is not a, a men bashing thing to say. This is not about men and women. It's about energies and qualities that we need more of um, from the feminine side, which men and women, which both men and women can embody. We can both embody both energies. And so this documentary was about um, DJs, female DJs and musicians, and how in music, um, how, the, how it's difficult for women in, in the industry as it is, and how it's so important to have this level of feminine energy within music. It it was it blew me away it wasn't quite what i expected um but it blew me away and then was, there were these two female djs um that were featured in the documentary that were playing a set afterwards and there was something about them one in particular this dj called closies who Clo closey who actually was at um, lightning in a bottle which was an event that i was at over the weekend um she played and this woman it was so like she, she's just um, she's a French woman. She's very chill. She's like she's the most humble, like non egotistical person. It was fantastic to watch her. I just loved everything about her. And but the music she played was so sensual and so like fun. And she just connected and got people and like everyone there. She got them moving and and it was such a fantastic. It it, it highlighted everything that the documentary was about, which is that you know, female DJs or, or DJs that have this kind of like feminine um, energy are different. And it's a different that we need. Um, there's this one in the documentary, one guy was talking about how, you know, female DJs get sensuality, they get um, rhythm, they like, they really know how to dance and connect. It's like making love with the audience. Whereas some male DJs can be a bit like, mm, 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 and it's all very like egotistical. And he described it as like a female DJ is it's making love and a, and a man DJ, it's sort of masturbation. And it kind of made so much sense there's such, it's so important. And so I'm tapping into all these topics on feminine energy. And I'll be speaking at an event called FemQ in um, J June, actually. It's next month. It's in a, it's not long away at all. And um, so I'll put the links to that event down there. Um, and it's, and again, it's about how we as a society need to embody and embrace more of these feminine qualities uh, within men and women to make the change that we need in the world. More compassion, more understanding, more caring, more nurturing, more sensuality. Um, and so it's a topic that I would love to hear your thoughts on um, and I'm really passionate about at the moment. Uh, so Kimberly saying, for sure, more compassion, less judgment. Yes, we de definitely need that. Um, Elias says, getting up in the morning is a task. One breakthrough for me was seeking my physical self. I had to deal with my medical issues, which contributed to my depression. I have a long way to go, but it's a start. <clears throat> 
I think that's a very important point, Olio. Um, in this documentary, there was one particular um, artist who has Lyme's disease, and it's incredibly debilitating. It's incredibly painful, um, and she's she's just always in pain, sort of stuck in bed, and really struggling with that. And um, again, like when you are experiencing some, when you are going suffering pain on a daily basis, it's very difficult to kind of get up and, and do life and be happy and implement all these practices when you, you are in that state. So yeah, getting to the bottom of that and addressing that is incredibly important. So if you're feeling fatigue, if you're feeling sick, if you're feeling pain, if you've got those things on a reoccurring basis, you 100% need to address that and look into what's causing that. One thing that I noticed um, is the food that we're eating. So many people, and I don't know who's on the call, I don't know exactly what you guys eat on a day to day basis, but I know, I think I can fairly say that the general population of America are eating garbage. They don't eat food, they eat processed junk, which is poisoning you and harmful and painful and, and damaging to your body. Our bodies are natural organisms, and when you put fake processed junk in there, it makes it sick. Um, and so one thing that I noticed is I have a pretty clean diet. I'm a vegetarian. Um, I don't eat that much junk. Um, and so generally that's what I'm used to eating. However, I was on set a few years ago and, um, just ate a couple of like a pack of cookies and just, just some chips, some chips, just some like junk food. Cause that was all that was available. And within about 10 minutes, I felt really bad. I felt really, really crap. And what sparked the idea sparked in me in that was, I'm aware of that shift that those crappy foods made me feel crap in 10 minutes because I have a, I have a, a relatively clean diet normally. So when I eat junk, I can feel the difference instantly. And I know I felt like junk because I just ate junk. Now, if people are not eating properly and you're just constantly living on a day-to-day -day basis, eating things that are making you feel bad, you don't know that that's what's making you feel sick. You just feel sick. So, um, you know, Olea made a really fantastic point. He's got, um, he's not well because um, of, of, in medical conditions that he's got to the bottom of. Um, but I would say that is so important to find these causes, find the reasons why you're not feeling good. Is it because of an underlining medical condition? What are you eating? What are you putting in and on your body? What are you consuming? What is, what's, what are you consuming is, is a huge part of that. Hello, my bestie, Justina. I love you. Redma says, Lyme's disease sufferer here. Redma, all the best to you. Um, this was a, this was a, yeah, I, I, I know someone else, a, a friend, a close friend that's going through it and I know how difficult that is. So all the best with how you're managing that. If you've got any advice or tips, I'd love to hear things that have helped you. Uh, the woman in the documentary, was talking about, you know, she'd done all the medication stuff um, and she used um, sort of meditation and music for her healing. And her music is absolutely phenomenal. So um, it's like mystical and magical. Maybe that will help you because she's so, sort of in that zone. So I'm going to put a link to amplify her. Um, I forget the name of that particular musician off the top of my head, but I've put Amplify Her in these comments and I'll update the post description when I finish it. All of this should be available. Um, so Redma, I'd urge you to check out her. Um, Shai says, I'm reading The Miracle Morning. It helps me greatly. Shai, that's a fantastic book. The Morning Miracle, guys, is all about um, setting yourself up every morning with a process, um, like, um, like a ritual, I guess, in the morning. And it includes, and you know, add to this if I, if I miss something, Shai, it includes um, uh, exercising for a certain amount of time, getting your heart rate going, reading, meditating, um, journaling, it's either journaling or affirmations or something along those lines. Um, what else was it? I think that it, the, I think there was five things. Shine, let me know if I've missed something out. I haven't read it for a while. Olio says, I think female DJs are allowed to go deep and express themselves and connect with others. Men, on the other hand, are policed to behave in a, um, um, a hegemonic masculine way, which prevents them from connecting and being vulnerable to others. Olio, that's a fantastic point that you made because when I when I was talking about male and female DJs and when I talked about the the quote that the guy had said in, in, in this documentary, there was an element of judgment to it. And my element of judgment was that, yeah, men are like this uh, and women are sensual and lovely and soft. And you're right. The reason that men are like that is because they have been conditioned to behave like that. And it's difficult for men to... Um, 
to allow themselves to be in that space, to be in that vulnerable place, to have to allow those feminine qualities to be in them and, and exist in them. So thank you for bringing up that point because you've just made me realize that I had a judgment about that too. Andrea, the beautiful Andrea says, uh, vegan, hashtag vegan, hashtag V the change, eat whole foods from Mother Earth, God uh, God for you or good for you, the animals and the planet. Omakar, hi there, lovely to see you after a long time too. Um, Shai says, I quit soda. Once I drank soda after not drinking it for a year, I felt terrible. Again, another fantastic point, people. Um, what are you drinking? Um, soda is one. I live in America where coffee and caffeine is completely normal. It's a drug. It's a drug that we get addicted to, that we shouldn't be addicted to, but it's become a socially acceptable drug, especially in America where it makes lots of money and everybody drinks it. Um, and so it, it is. It's like, what are we drinking? What are we consuming? Alcohol. I've had a couple of, and I think maybe that's what it is too. I've had a couple of, you know, after a weekend at a, at a music festival, and having a great time and being intoxicated followed by lots of events that I've been going to and drinking alcohol that plays a huge part in how we're feeling how we are our emotions um I didn't drink for about two three years and I felt fantastic um and so I definitely think that that's something to to be aware of Christine says I love this you're so awesome um thank you for bringing this into the light my pleasure thank you Christine um Omakar says but we don't always have a choice of what goes in he's talking about <clears throat> what I was saying about what we consume um some in some situations yes we don't always have a choice but you can pay attention you can be aware of what is the water you're drinking I live in in LA in California um yes the water is drinking better is better drinking water than somewhere in Africa, for example. Um, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to get a deadly disease and die from the tap water. However, it tastes disgusting. There is something that's not quite right about it. When I first moved out here, it would make me sick when I used to drink it. And so I'm aware that I don't quite trust that. I'm going to try and find purer sources of water to drink. Um, you know what you can go and choose to buy food from farmer's markets. You can, you have, you know what your you choose to consume certain things, whether that's content that you watch, TV that you watch, music that you listen to, you have a choice in that. Um, products that you put on your skin, you're aware of what you're consuming. Um, you can't, all, I, and you're right, Omakai, I know you can't always check absolutely everything that goes into your body, but if you pay attention to your intention, like, um, like Andrea Pennington said, you being a vegan, eating whole organic foods, you can make those choices to do those things. Um, Rema says diet and exercise is huge. And I also meditate, use meditation and four, three, two megahertz music and essential oils. Um, Rema, that is exactly like this female DJ. Please check out, um, amplify her. I'll find the name of the specific artist, the one that has Lyme's disease and uses music to help her because I think you will really, um, jam with that. Uh, Rebma says, thank you. Shai says, you've hit the mark. Thank you. Hey, Greta. She says, IV ozone and hyperbaric oxygen therapy can help a lot with Lyme's disease. Whoa. I don't even know what that means, um, but that's definitely something to look into, Rebma, and I'm going to forward that onto my friend, um, Kenan, too. I'll tag him in that. Omakar says, I want to do the morning pages. Explain and give me some tips. So, Omakar, there's two things. You've got the um, morning pages, which comes from a book called um, The Artist's Way. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. <clears throat> I was out late dancing last night to some fantastic, beautiful music. Um, so that comes from The Artist's Way, which is a book. Um, and we were also talking about The Morning Miracle, which is another book about um, like a, just a process in the morning of getting yourself into a habit and into a routine of doing certain things. So get both of them. Um, they're both fantastic. I highly recommend them both. Shai says also visualization. That was another thing that's part of the morning pages. Thank you. I forgot that one. Visualization, visualizing the life that you want to create. I struggle with that still. I've not managed to kind of sit and focus on visualizations, but they are incredibly important. Um, and Shai also says, and setting your intentions before you go to bed. Um, that's really good. I think that's a fantastic idea, which I would like to incorporate. Now, the other thing that I wanted to touch on um, Oleo had reached out because he uh, is living in a country where he doesn't feel like he quite belongs. He doesn't feel like it's quite the environment for him. And I can definitely relate to that. You know, I moved to Los Angeles because I wanted to move into acting. And when I got here, it was very obvious very quickly that this environment 
um, this lifestyle, this attitude is way more in alignment with me and my personality and who I am. I love England. I miss English people terribly. England is my home, but it's depressing and negative and miserable and gray. And it makes me sad. And I'm just not, just not, it's not right for me there, you know? And so moving to LA, I instantly found that the sun shining every day instantly made a difference in my mood. The ability to go out and do a hike and just drive five minutes down the road and find somewhere to hike, drive down the road for half an hour and go and be by the beach, to drive two and a half hours out of town and go and be in the desert or four hours away and go into to Mammoth and go skiing with my friends in the mountains. Having that um, is definitely m way more in alignment and necessary for, for me to live. Um, and so I'm very happy with that. As well as that, the attitude of people, there's, there's a, an idea that people in LA are flaky and fake and, you know, obnoxious or whatever, self-absorbed, whatever the, the judgments we want to have on them are. But in my experience, I love that. Um, I love that joy in people. I love that there's there's hundreds, thousands, millions of people here that have come here to pursue a passion, pursue something they love. Um, I admire that greatly and I like being around that energy. And there's just a can-do attitude in LA, which I really love. And yeah, there's a bunch of other things about America and LA that I, I am not fond of, um, but I'm happy to be here because um, it fits with me. And so Oleo is trying to find something like that, that, that suits him. And he's not sure where it is. He's also limited by, um, you know, le legally and being from a country where you don't get visas as easily. And so there's other criteria and things that are impacting that. So from what I would say, the, the types of places that you, Oleo, would be looking for are um, places like Costa Rica and Bali. Um, I think places where they have, I ha haven't actually either been to either of those, but I know that there's um, open-minded communities, people who want to give back, people who want to um, share and create and make the world a better place. And I know that there's lots of groups and communities of people in those countries. People are doing it in all sorts of different ways. There's, um, you know, you can go there and it can be very expensive and stay in very expensive places. But then I also know that there's communities where it's not as expensive. And so, if cost is a problem, this is when you have to start getting creative. We tend to think if I want to go and travel, or if I want to go and do this, that it means that I have to go and spend a lot of money. That is not true. I've experienced people who are traveling on an incredibly small budget, who are living on pretty much nothing and, and having an amazing time with it. Um, and so the ways that you do that are you get creative, right? In any of these places, you have hostels. In any of those hostels, they need volunteers to help run the hostels. And a lot of times they exchange accommodation and food for working at the hostel for a certain amount of time. That's one thing that pretty much anyone can do. If you then have a skill, what I would say is to think about what your skills are, what your unique qualities are, and see how you can tailor them. So Oleo works in for nonprofits and has a, a ton of experience in nonprofits. I would say specifically related to HIV and AIDS prevention and awareness, right? So I would say in any of those two countries specifically, because I think that would be a good fit for you, but you could also do this anywhere in the world, um, find every single nonprofit that's going on and reach out to them and telling them what you do and what you can offer and that you are looking for an opportunity to kind of help them and help develop them, um, you know, and, and see where that goes. Start building these relationships. I think that if you can email a hundred different people a week, and a hundred kind of sounds like an outrageous number, but really it's, it's not. If you could spend, I think, four or five hours compiling a list, making, making sure that you've got this organized because it's very hard to keep track of, compiling a list, you have a template email that you send, and then you, you write to all these people. If you don't get a reply back within a week, you write and follow up. For those that you have connected with, you start to establish a relationship and you have a conversation about how you can help serve them. Um, th th that's what you're doing. You're offering how you can help serve them. Your ask is, I want to move. I want the opportunity to kind of leave this country and be around a community that are doing something um, that I believe in and I want to help and give back more. Um, and then offer that and see what, the exchange you can have is. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my idea on a, a good way of doing that. Um, going back to some of these comments now, 
Um, so Shai says the Miracle Morning, um, S-A, savers. So savers stands for silence, which is meditation, um, affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading, and scribbling, which is sort of journaling or um, uh, the morning pages, as other people call them. Thanks so much for that, Shai. I really appreciate it. That helps. That's exactly what it is. And McCann says, yeah, once I get to YouTube, um, after uh, one after another, I keep watching, but lately I have discovered a feature. It gives notifications after a specified time that you are watching for too long. I think in general, the settings, it's quite useful. Yeah, I mean, I, again, Omaka, you still have a choice in YouTube as to what to watch. Um, turn off, I would say, turn off the um, autoplay feature um, if you've got that on there. And also, yeah, giving yourself that time to turn something off if it's not what you want to be watching. Um, sorry, give yourself that 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 stop um, so that you don't spend too much time on that. That I think that's a great thing for things like Facebook and Instagram. If, if I know that you can use things like that, um, there's apps I, um, to have on your desktop. I don't know if you can quite do it on the apps yet, but we spend so much time staring at a Facebook or an Instagram feed and it's like, get off that, you know? So mindfulness, mindfulness about, you know, not being sent down the rabbit hole. Ali needs to travel to India. That's another, yeah, great, um, Omakar, great suggestion. Thank you. Hi, Loz, lovely to see you. It's been a while. Um, Shai says you can use Volunteer Match or a website that can help you find a good match for you. Fantastic tip. Thank you so much for that. Volunteer Match is a good one. There's remote volunteering and the usual location volunteering. That is incredible because, Leo, that might be an opportunity with the remote volunteering to get to connect and find an organization that you want to work with, which, which could potentially lead to more work. So that's great. And he says, I'm looking into what you said, actually emailing a few groups now. It's more about mindset, to be honest, and getting that drive to make a choice. So do you mean the drive for you to make a choice um, and the mindset or is it uh, the mindset of the place and the people that you're going to go to? Um, I definitely think that um, if it's the mindset of, of you, um, it's, it's a difficult one. It's a, it's a choice. I was speaking to somebody else, part of the community too, about how do you overcome fear? And it's just taking the plunge, taking the action, taking the steps um, and, 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 and moving forward. Um, there's, there's times where I, I hold back from doing things because there's all of the, the reasons for it. And it's kind of like looking at why am I hesitant? Where is that fear coming from? What is that limiting belief that I have? What was the experience that made me think that this wasn't good? And then sort of changing your story around that belief and giving yourself some power, empowering instead. We need to kind of grab a hold of our, our minds and just sort of take, take, take control of it. Okay, guys, this is fantastic. Um, I wanted to keep it at 30 minutes because, um, because sometimes I can go on for a really long time. Um, but, and today there's, there's lots and lots of exciting things to be working on and catching up with. But I'm really glad that I got to talk to you today. Next week, I'll be doing a Facebook Live on, um, I think, interviews on Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, and um, what else to report? For anyone on the podcast, thank you for listening. For anyone watching the replay, thank you for listening. To stay updated with uplifting content, um, make sure that you uh, go to following and then see first at the top of uplifting, uh, at the top of our page, uplifting content, because otherwise you won't see anything from us. We have an uplifting community Facebook group if you want to join that. Um, if you've got really great content to share, we love to share it and, and sort of share that on the main page too. And then also I have um, uh, an email, a weekly email, like an email update that I send to people. So I'll put the link to that in these comments. That's probably the only way to really stay connected with, with what's going on because, you know, there's so many social media accounts. You've got so much noise with this email update that I send. You get definitely something from me that's coming directly from me. I hate spamming people. I hate getting, you know, tens of emails a week from the same person. I literally, I call it a weekly ish email update because I never send it consistently every week. So you'll only get it once or twice a month, most likely, if any, if ever. So that was it for now. Just uh, saying goodbye to Rebma, Tina. Thank you, Tina. Thomas, thanks again for an amazing video. My pleasure. Lovely to have you, Thomas. Tiffany says, haha, we love you, dear. Thanks for showing up today. My pleasure. Thank you for showing up. You make my day. Uh, Rebma and Shai says, I do, I do not, not sure if I already have. Well, get on that, my love. Hey, Beth, lovely to see you. I'm just bouncing out, but thanks for joining. Guys, you're wonderful. Take care. Bye.